okay so let's start with the selenium how should we automate okay we have completed by okay and we are going to do what and how okay so what is selenium we have to understood and in the coming modules we'll come to know how to do it okay so these three things actually helps us i always follow this thing by what and how or maybe you can change it what you wanted to know then why okay but i always follow this thing if you have this concept in your mind if you know what and why right how will be done by itself you don't have to worry it okay so selenium is best actually friends uh, selenium is used to automate only web applications i'll repeat my statement selenium is used to automate only web applications there are many application like desktop applications sap is also an automate uh, sap is also an application there are many uh, um, erp tools they are also an type of an application okay <clears throat> oracle ibm db2 mysql all those are applications only like it's a database application like that way okay so you cannot do mobile apps testing you can do mobile web testing so the you will you will come to know about the advantage of selenium none of the application and automation tool in the market do or uh, test automation testing in iPhone or Android okay so testing an application is actually totally a different thing because it's a exe file Java file that is there but you can do web testing on phone okay Teja is asking I work for Tivoli products a product covers database application server and mobile so can these three components covered by selenium see uh, first product is Tivoli that is a data management tool. Okay, friends, uh, Tivoli, uh, I'll like to tell you what Tivoli is. Tivoli actually is a database management tool, okay, that you can do, I mean, that, that's it for you, okay. It's a IBM tool, which is there for, uh, in that IBM DB2 is integrated, okay. So I work for Tivoli product, a product covers database application server. So your application is web, so friends, we got a very good scenario. She has a Tivoli application, uh, IBM RF uh, tool and there she has few database applications okay so she is having a web application and that web application is okay Tivoli asset management yeah that's app, Tivoli applications management okay so Teja correct me if I'm going wrong okay uh, so she has a web application then uh, she that web application is integrated with Tivoli applications management okay yes uh, Teja you can uh, do selenium integrate you can design a framework which will interact with web application that we are covering it okay now what is the advantage of selenium you can download Tivoli Java API and integrate with selenium and rather than going to Tivoli and get the data out of it through your selenium framework itself you can get the data out of it okay in my uh, project in explanation I'll be taking up how you can integrate many things with selenium and get your things done like database thing okay so that will help you so Yes, you can do it. I think I have answered your question, Teja. Okay, sure. Thanks, thanks Teja. So where were where were we? We were uh, like, okay, let me complete the slide first. It's very important, and it's very important for you guys also to think. Okay, Selenium is only for web applications. Okay, and the best part is that it supports multiple operating systems along with multiple programming languages with multiple with support for almost most of the browsers like Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, Opera, Safari. Okay. So when you, with the help of Selenium you can do performance and testing also of your application and you can check the execution speed of your you can analyze how fast your application is working okay you can do little bit of load testing on your application actually you, there is a specific tool in the market called load runner or RFP tool called uh, RPT rational performance testing tool so they are specific tools to test uh, performance of an application but there is also a 
feature in Selenium to test your perform to test the performance of your application. Okay, you can do a load testing. You can test your applications with lots of data, and you can test your applications on multiple uh, browsers as well. Okay, so that will give you a picture how good and how fast your application is. Okay, in between, I'll take up an examples. Uh, I have a very good example, but uh, let me complete this slide, then I'll come up. Okay, then. We have a programming, you, as I told you that multiple programming languages are there. So if your application, just listen clearly, it's a very good statement. If your application is built in Java, okay, you can use Perl to design a Selenium and test that Java application. If your application is built in PHP, you can design a Selenium tool in PHP or Python or Java or Ruby or Perl or JavaScript and test your application. So you have full flexibility. You are not at all concerned what technology the people have used to design a web application. You can use any of these languages, design a tool and do it. Okay. Even in other automation tools, you don't have a flexibility to uh, uh, test it on many operating systems, but in Selenium you can. And you have a different uh, option to test it on multiple browsers at the same time, multiple versions of the browsers also. Okay. So we'll come to know in Selenium grid how can we test uh, do a testing on multiple browsers at the same time. I told you it supports multiple browsers, but there is one more thing. You can do multi parallel execution on four different systems also. And even in your system also, you can do a execution on two different browsers at the same time, keeping your browser minimized. I think what I said is good, amazing, right? So let's go to the next slide. Friends, we have very less time also, but don't worry, I'll try to cover up the things fast and uh, uh, let me know if I'm going fast or slow and uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. Okay? Why I'm saying every time? Because it gives you uh, a hit that uh, it hint that you have to ask the question. Okay? So when was Selenium founded? Like in 2004, there was a developer in ThoughtWorks who was like you only who he, he was thinking his name is Jason Huggins. He was uh, doing some process and he uh, wrote a JavaScript and thought, okay, why should I do it this thing? Why not to write a JavaScript and get the things done? So he wrote a small JavaScript and that was working and work that worked for him. So he, along with his development team, designed a tool. Now tool come into picture. As of now, there was no tool. They come up at the first time they designed a tool called Selenium IDE. That was a record and play. That was a proof because that was a proof to show how automation can be done. Okay. There is a tool we'll we'll see in the coming slides what Selenium IDE is and with that with the with that we can do little bit of automation, not hundred percent, but yeah 30, 40 percent, 50 percent or 60 percent you can. In Selenium IDE tool you cannot put your logic okay so record and play is never a good option and is not used by any of the company in the market okay but yes even qtp is also record and play option ibm rft has record and play option selenium has record and play option but that gives you a picture and gives you a level of understanding how automation can be done but things cannot be done with uh, record and play because things are dynamic Everything is dynamic in the market. Okay, so these guys worked on uh, together and came up with an API called that uh, called Selenium Remote Control. It's an o it, that was an open source. They made it as an open source and put it in the market. Okay, <clears throat> so with the help of Selenium RC, that is the second component of Selenium, uh, they were able to put a logic in it. Okay, putting a logic in it means I'll take one or two examples like you want to do same things 10 times like you have one 10 script, one script you want to do it 10 times. Why not to put a for loop to repeat it again and again. Okay, I want to put a condition if the user who is going to log in is an administrator, give him admin access. If the user who is going to log in in an application, uh, he's a normal user, give him like he's a one of the employee of the company give him as an employee access if the user who is going to access an application is a guest user don't give him access at all so that is the logic you have put but when you do record and play the thing that you have recorded that will only get repeated okay let's go to the next slide so 
in 2000 this tool was uh, selenium was uh, used in google all uh, it was used by the google was the first company who was actually using it a lot maybe other companies are also there but this uh, google was using it to automate their many uh, processes so there was a developer called simon stewart he thought they, there are so many bugs he found because it was uh, <coughs> in 2000 only uh, for it came and he st he started working on it by 2005 only okay if, if anything comes in the market it won't be 100% correct okay today if you try to do something you won't be an expert but when you try to do it practice hard and do the things you will become an expert okay so this guy was thinking there are so many bugs and tools in the selenium rc so he thought i'll try to fix the things because selenium rc architecture was from uh, from uh, jason point of view he did a very great job right friends he did a very great job he thought out of the box then what simon thought i'll twist it and make the things and he came up with a new tool called web driver okay and that web driver was overcoming all the bugs that were there in the selenium rc and selenium rc was not able to do all the things so he came up with a tool web driver and right now every company and i uh, means the community is work google is working google and thoughtwork is working on uh, selenium web driver only uh, the rc has been deprecated okay so how selenium web driver form okay before the the first tool came was selenium ide okay then which tool came they that was a prototype to show how automation works then to put a logic in it uh, thoughtworks came up with a tool called selenium rc that tool was used by google and they fixed up the things and the tool came selenium web driver but all together you they cannot neglect each and everything okay so they merged both the projects and it came as selenium web driver okay so in selenium rc the java api was not good the naming conventions were not good the it was not pure object oriented programming so selenium driver has additional uh, advanced features it is pure object oriented and it is supporting selenium rc things also because there are many companies who are using selenium rc so if today they are migrating deprecating rc then and coming up with selenium web driver then web drive then web driver should support what has been what has already been done so it is supporting all the browsers okay and it works very close to the browser that's the reason rc and uh, selenium web driver both are uh, the execution in that is too fast okay okay let's move to the next slide okay so these are the people who did a contribution to the selenium uh, api uh, not to the tool it's an ap uh, project and they each person has done its own uh, small small things and all together they have merged the things and come up with the tool okay there is a link at the bottom if you want you can go to the slide maybe if you want so these are the list of people group of people who have worked on uh, let me go to a link called selenium contributors you can see lots of indian people are also there they have worked on it and the people from all over the world they have worked on it so it's not a one people who have did a full uh, contribution to selenium there are many people who have worked on it so once you will be familiarized with uh, once you will be very much uh, familiar with selenium you will come to know what is store so there are many things that they have come up someone has worked on click someone has worked on perform someone has worked on start and someone has worked on get test time so like that in java api there are many things that has been uh, that is there so it's not that one person is there only jason and steve did everything no they have a team and everyone did mm, contributed their part and it is this is how it it's going okay so that was the contribution done by uh, to selenium now your uh, selenium uh, components are going to start okay so first day manual testing process was there then in 2004 uh, thoughtworks uh, developer he came up with a tool called selenium ide so that he can show a prototype how automation can be done okay then he they came up with selenium rc so that because in ide was a tool record and play you cannot put a logic in it okay so to put a logic in it they came up with selenium rc then if within 2 years it went to google then they came up no there are many bugs in it then selenium 2 came okay web driver so web driver is one tool selenium is other tool 
then they like when they were about to launch web driver they thought they have to integrate selenium also then they gave a name selenium web driver so rc was selenium 1 and web driver is selenium 2 we call web driver also as selenium web driver okay but when google came up they came up with a tool named web driver not rc okay then the last one is selenium grid to do parallel execution okay i think you guys are there right because uh, it's so uh, don't get out of the flow okay so then flavors of selenium is what so selenium id is one of the tool that came first then came selenium rc selenium web driver was second and the last one is selenium grid so right now these two are very much connected if you want to do parallel execution you can use selenium grid if you want to do uh, use uh, the advanced feature of selenium you can use selenium web driver selenium rc is deprecated now now no enhancement or development is going on and id is there that is just for record and play okay